Hello and welcome to the Dice Brigade's uh, Top 10. Uh, we uh, wanted to do a Top 10... Oh. Hello and welcome to the Dice Brigade's Top 10. We thought it would be fun to do a Top 10 big games and tiny packages, uh, specifically because we played the uh, Tiny Epic Westerns, and uh, mm -hmm. it turned out I had a really good time. I love big boxes, and I cannot lie. I like small boxes. <laughs> <laughs> but I anyway, uh, so that um, that well, really like surprised me. Too, yeah, me? it surprised me how much fun that game was. <laughs> uh, again, wouldn't be in my top ten games of all time, but I would say that it was fun and enjoyable, and I will happily play it again. So we be better because I really like that game. <laughs> <laughs> so that got us thinking about what are top ten games uh, that that are fun. Uh, so that the box in small packages. Yeah, we're thinking like. Um, patchwork size boxes uh, mm -hmm. or smaller that, that's what we consider small i know that yeah they're typically uh, boxes that are much smaller but for us that's what i would consider a small box would be the patchwork size and then so small in that so um, okay one that might be a little bit bigger but slightly yeah. but it, you know you get the idea not uh twilight imperium fourth edition size <laughs> <laughs> number 10 twilight imperium fourth. how about uh, the carcassonne uh, big box everdell the the kind of collector's edition yeah, the collector's edition. Uh, yeah. That thing is like... So, uh, the the one that we wanted to give an honorable mention to is because our group has had a lot of fun playing this. It's uh, Uno, Show em No Mercy. Now, the thing about Uno is uh, this game, like, it encourages all the toxicity that you get when you play Uno. It's like, draw four. No, 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 no. Draw ten. <laughs> um, and some people hold grudges. It's great. And you know so, who you are, Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, uh, and then there's like the, uh, skip everybody while draw four, <laughs> that's just like redundant, <laughs> but it's funny too, cause it's like, boom, I'm gonna skip everybody, and then I'm gonna make that other guy draw four, <laughs> it's, anyway, so that's why we like Uno Show No Mercy, it's, you go into it, you have fun, uh, but anyway, uh, getting us started with our, um, number 10, is a game we haven't played a whole lot of, but I really know it. Once the group plays this game, they're going to have fun, and that's Get Bit. Uh, so Get Bit is a game where you have the players, they have these little plastic pieces that are lined out, and there's a little shark that's chasing them. It's really cute. You have a hand of cards, and you guys lay down your cards. Um, <laughs> and you lay them face down, and then um, the... Uh, Lowest number moves first, so it's like, let's just say there are three oh, of these guys. Black. Yeah. Yeah, because they're, they're separated by color already. But let's just say there's three of them. So let's just say that the green was the first card to go, he moves. And then let's just say the blue was the next, and he would move. And then the brown would go. So that means the green would be in the back, so he'd lose a body part. Once you lost four body parts, you were out of the game. Now, the thing is, if two people play the same number, neither of them move. So that's where it kind of comes into like, oh, I can't just play the highest card because if, if, if green and blue, blue play sevens and then brown plays like a one, he gets to go in front. Nice. So so there's that kind of thing. So it's just a fun little party game where you see your guy lose pieces and pieces and pieces. So that's why Get Bit um, is on our list. And we will be playing that very shortly. A video on this very yeah, shortly. Yeah, I'm hoping to play with more players. I don't think I had as much fun with it. It says three to six. It's really a four or five to six yeah. player game. So I, I, anyway. But so that's why it's number 10 on our list. Number nine. One that I enjoy playing with, Chase. He's rather funny to play with. Cockroach Poker. It has nine different species of... Eight. Eight different they're species. They're all here on the back of the card. Yes, they're all on the back of the no. card. We've got the cockroach, the stink bug, the spider... Rat, frog, or toad. It's a toad, yeah. Toad, fly, bat, and scorpion. Mm -hmm. Now, the way Cockroach Poker plays is you shuffle out the whole deck to the amount of players. Um, and so you're looking at your cards, and you'll play a card face down that says, Hey, I have a cockroach. And the player can either choose to believe you, or he can choose to... to uh, he can choose to accept the card or to decline the card. If he accepts it... I've got a rat. Yeah, if he accepts it... He can say if he believes you or not. If he's correct, if because you're, you're you're totally allowed to lie. If he's correct, then you take the card. If he's wrong, then he takes the card. And if he declines, he takes a look at it, 
and then says, he could say it's anything. Mm -hmm. So you get those moments where it goes around the table, it's like, that's a cockroach, that's a cockroach, that's a cockroach, and then your last player is like, is everybody here gaslighting me, or is that really a cockroach? Anyway, so it's fun like that. So what's also charming about this game is the artwork, even though these are both toads, they're separate. So no two cards have the same artwork in it, which I absolutely love. It is really cool. It's, it's attention to detail that they didn't need, but it, but it really enjoyable. adds a lot of charm to this game. So yeah, Cockroach Poker is our number nine. Number seven is... Tiny Epic Western. A big game in a small box. Well, it's a tiny epic. Anyway, uh, so so tiny epic western. Um, we uh, we have a video that we uploaded recently, but essentially you're trying to buy for control of a town. You do that by sending your your henchmen out to different areas, and things happen. You kind of play a little bit of poker. It's a lot of fun. Yes. Now we wanted to say that we do in the future want to do a uh, tiny epic western top ten top tiny 10. epic, not western top ten tiny oh, I'm epic. Sorry. Top 10 Tiny Epic. List. The thing List. is, we've only played Tiny Epic Westerns. So let us know what game, what Tiny Epic game we should try next. I'm personally leaning towards mechs because I love mechs. Ooh, I didn't know they had a mech one. Yeah, Tiny Epic mechs. So we'll, I need but, to look at the list to see what they have. Yeah, they, they, it looks like, I, I was looking at the list the other day. It looks like there's a lot of fun ones there. So please. This is like so cool too. It looks like wood. On the epic part, like there's a lot of love that goes into these games. Like I was, really good. like I'm impressed with how much love yeah. and attention goes into these games. So tiny epic western, take control of the town, have fun. The real number seven is just, coming up. Just say that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> number seven, patchwork. Uwe Rosenberg, great designer. Patchwork is a great two-player game. You get to make a quilt. It's exciting. <laughs> No, actually, it's weird. Buttons are your points. Yeah. So you're trying to get the most buttons by the end of the game. But the problem is uh, you have to spin buttons to buy patches. Because for every blank piece you have... No swearing on this show. <laughs> <laughs> See what I can put up? Want. No, I'm keeping it in. <laughs> for every blank piece that you have, blank square you have left, you're, you're, uh, you, you have negative points. <laughs> anyway, so it's kind of like you're playing this kind of fun game of Tetris where you're trying to get the you're trying to figure out how to get the right pieces and it is gratifying when you could actually get the right piece uh to to build your quilt. And uh yeah, it's a game where you'll probably for the first several times you play, you'll probably go into the negative on points. We have the Christmas one, right? Yes. Christmas one is way prettier if you like art. I would go with one of the themed ones instead of the original. Yeah, I think the Americana one looks really good, too. Yeah, I'm interested in that one. This one, I just don't really I'm, care for the colors too much. But I think it's meant you. to remind you of, like, because Uwe Rosenberg is German. I think he's German. He's from Europe. And I think it's supposed to remind you of quilts that would have been his kind of ancestry. Oh, okay, I see. So that's why I've always appreciated it. Plus, Uwe Rosenberg has a weird thing where his artwork is never the best. But then I, I, I kind of fall in love with it because the games are so good. The games are really good. <laughs> so, it's not the only Uwe Rosenberg uh, game on this list, but we'll get into that one later. So yeah, so number real number seven is Patchwork. I can't count. Hey. Number six. Codenames! This Excellent is... game. Teamwork. <laughs> you get to be on two different teams. And then you have these lovely tiles in the back which you have red team and blue team and then there's a assassinate assassinator well no there's agents the terminator. <laughs> there's agents and then there's a code giver um and essentially yes, one person's the code giver the rest of people on his teams are agents he's trying to give we're, we're, we're talking about coding his pictures specifically here he yes. gives one word and a number so the word is connected to the cards Chess, and then number one. Yeah, and then the number is how many cards he's trying to get you to touch. Now, you guys can always guess one additional card. So if you guys guessed wrong, uh, you touch it. And if it's your color, then he puts one of these mm -hmm. like colored tiles down. If it's your opponent's color, so then the, the point goes to the opponent. Down. If it's one of these white ones, it's fine. But also, there's this little black uh, square. And that is the assassin. So, yeah. So, Codenames is, to me, like a great party game. You can teach most people the rules. 
in a couple of seconds. Since it's team games, you can divide the experienced players up. And it only plays for 15 minutes. Yeah, and you can play several games of it. So giving everybody the chance to be the code giver. It so, says four to eight plus. I mean, that's pretty good. I, I would say that... I think it would get a little too crazy, though. I would eight. probably say six or seven. Six people would probably be the most yeah. that you'd want to run. Four to six, because... Once you get too many people, then it's really it's, hard because yeah. one person might say, like, um, surrounded, too. And everybody's like, well, bugs are surrounding everybody. And, and then he's talking about there's, like, four candlesticks. And surrounding <laughs> around. That uh, really happened. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> Code names. Code names. Play it. It's fun. Yeah. It's one of those beautifully simple games, too. It really is. Number five in games with inc inconvenient boxes is... Inconvenient boxes? It's mm -hmm. a cool box. It's a terrible box. Sushi Go! Farty. I hate tin boxes. Game developers, publishers, stop. It's cute. They are annoying to stack. Well, you're also the one that likes to make sure that the back lines up with the front. Mm -hmm. And one time a developer I, I was, made it so bad it drove him nuts. Did you even buy the game because of that? No, we bought the game. It was one box. It was just not placed on properly, okay? <laughs> it was like a square box. So it was like rotated one time. I, and I was about like, it for like a month. Anyway, uh, all my boxes and this boxes in this house line up. That's all I got to say. Okay. <laughs> so sushi, um, it plays into the Hulk, like, sushi's going around on a conveyor belt thing, mm -hmm. but uh, it's... So you get a hand of cards, mm -hmm. everybody does, and you get all of them, you pass all of them out. You take a card, pass it around, pass it. No, 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 I'm saying you deal out yeah. all the cards, mm -hmm. and then um, you pick one card, you set it down, and then you pass your hand to the next player, but... Um, some players are slower than others, so you, you got to watch out for that. <laughs> you kind of have to have somebody keeping everybody in time. In other words, yeah. it just gets to where it's like all the cards keep, it gets a little chaotic. Yeah. So it's I best to try to keep. Do one, two, three, go. Yeah. That's what we do, I think. Yeah. I just love the artwork, though. It's like the little food. They have cute little faces on them. Very Japanese um, mm. flavor to it. And I it's do love the thing. Jap it's what? It's oozing with theme. Yeah, and I love Japanese themed things, so this is just really cute and fun. Yeah, uh, and, and, and there's fun gameplay where you're looking at the cards, and then as the cards go around, you kind of get an idea of what this hand has. Yeah. So then you're thinking, okay, I know for a fact there's an excess of these things. So I'm going to start putting the, taking these, yeah. and then somebody else will start taking them too. Yeah, and, and when you're seeing what everybody else is putting down, you're like, I was collecting those, you jerk, and yeah. it's, it's fun. Yeah. And then someone else starts collecting them. Even though there's two people fighting, it's, it's, it's hilarious, it's chaotic. It is very chaotic. Uh, and this is probably the biggest box that I would consider, but I mean, really, the original, this is the party version, so it has, it has like a board, and it has multiple expansions. The original game was a pretty small game. Was it? I mm -hmm. don't remember. Yeah, but this is the better version, except for this. Cute. Stop with the tin boxes. It's cute. No more tin boxes. It's cute. It's the reason I haven't gotten any of the Forbidden games yet. Perfect. It's a series of games that are all in tin boxes! Okay, so number four. <laughs> four. I became Nixon all of a sudden. <laughs> I become Nixon, shoot me. Love letters. Ultimately, this is probably the smallest game on our this list. Game. This is what you would determine, yeah. So in love letters, um, your goal is to get your letter to the princess. And you're trying to find, uh, essentially you have, a, you have characters, um, from the lowest being the guards to the highest being the princess herself. And you, uh, you have a hand in your card, and you draw a hand card, and then you play the card. You play one of the cards and you keep the other one secret. And you're either trying to knock out everyone else or you're trying to be the highest number when the deck runs out. There will be a card that is removed at random at the start of the game so you don't exactly know what it, it might be the princess. And, and yeah, so you don't exactly know exactly what it will be. Unless you're me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so we played this game one time and we were playing with like six people. And you kept guessing yeah. everybody's roles, like because the guard lets yeah. you try to guess what someone else has every time. And she'd be like, "You're the Baron," <laughs> and uh, 
But yeah, so then um, if you do make it to where the last card is drawn, everybody reveals their cards. But it's like the princess, if you discard her, you lose. I think that's the princess, right? Yeah. Yeah, if you discard a princess. So if somebody you forces you to discard that card, you're like, ah, so you could be holding on to that card, hoping that. So yeah, it's a fun game. It's uh, it, especially with more players because that's where it gets really kind of chaotic. With three players, you can kind of figure out what people have. Roughly, like it's, but I think with four players or four or more players, it's. I, I mean, I think we played with five. I think when five I was a that, lot of fun, and it was a lot of fun. Three players, you're not going to have as much fun. I I played with three, and it's okay, but I definitely recommend four or mm. higher for this game. This is just another one of those games where we're going to try and get to the table real soon with more players than we yeah. had last time. So yeah, so love letters. This game is great. It's also pretty inexpensive too. Is it? Yeah, it's. Is I mean, twenty. It it's less than twenty. Well, it was before number before prices went crazy. Oh, are they up now? Everything's up now. I mean, pl like uh, oil uses plastic. Pl plastic, you know, you to make plastic, you need oil. So oil has gone up like crazy. So everything plastic related. That makes sense. <laughs> Petro. The, the bag is really cute. And it has straws. Yeah. And the reason why and this kind of thing doesn't bother me as opposed to like the 10 cases, this is small. I can put this anywhere on my shelf. I can't put that 10 case anywhere. <laughs> Every board game collector that has to organize their shelves <laughs> agrees with me on this one. <laughs> it's okay. Moving on. <laughs> Number three, which is an excellent party game in a small box, Spyfall. So, uh, to <laughs> and I'm really bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to place, first of all, like, why is this thing not? Oh, that's why. What's bothering me? It wasn't closing properly. Okay, so to play Spyfall, um, you have these bags that have card locations in them. We like the DC one and I'll <laughs> What? <laughs> you just started no, like it's falling fine. Out. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> so to play Spyfall, you have uh, you're trying one person is uh, we, we're talking about the DC version here, and I'll tell you why in a second, but but to play Spyfall, one player is the Joker, and everyone else is trying to figure out who the Joker is. The Joker is trying to figure out what location, like what iconic location you are in DC. It could be like the Batcave. It could be the Daily Bugle Planet. Daily Planet. Bugle's Spider-Man. Yeah, Daily uh, Planet. Yeah, the Daily Planet. So the thing is, you so you have a, like, you count the number of players. Let's just, just say you have six players. You'll remove all but five of the location cards, and you'll put a Joker card in there. And you'll have all the bags kind of face down to where you can't see which location. You'll draw one, uh, pull the cards out, shuffle them, give them to one player. One player will be the Joker. And so you'll say, hey, uh, can you give me a pen? You'll be asking basic questions. And when you ask the question and you answer it, you're trying to do it in such a way that you're trying to let people know, yes, this is where we're at. But you don't want it to be so obvious that, like, if I'm asking for a pen, there's a good chance it's the Daily Planet. But you, so you have to be specific enough to let everyone else know where you're at. But you, then you have to be vague you don't enough. Want the Joker to find out where you're yeah. at. Yeah, and when you answer, you also don't want to answer vaguely because if you answer vaguely, that's going to put suspicion on you. So the reason why we like this version, and I'm not sure if they've added this to others, but this was the first one to do it, uh, was there's one pack that has all Jokers in it. Mm -hmm. And the very first time we played this game, that's one of the that was the pack that we got. Didn't you? Pick it like randomly. I picked it randomly. Yeah, you picked it randomly. Well, yeah, because it wouldn't have been fun if I would have known. Yeah, that's true. So I'm sitting there thinking, like, everybody here is on to me. And the questions they're asking are like the vaguest in the world. And I'm like, where are we at? Where? And I remember a friend of mine and I, we locked eyes and she stared at me for like 10 seconds. And I'm thinking she knows I'm the Joker. And then she's like, so I have a, I, 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 I kept, I'm going to guess we're at this place. And I'm like, and I, I was everybody very was vaguely. So every, I was like, oh, well, man, everybody else was just like sitting there like, like, and I'm like, wait, do you have the Joker too? And then like, you could just feel like the tension break as everyone realized everybody was the Joker. And then one guy proceeded to get the Joker like five times in a row. It was 
I am hilarious. <laughs> and he's like, before he looked at the card, he's like, you guys know I shouldn't be the Joker again. And then I don't, I wish we could have cut that on camera, his face every time. He's like, <laughs> but he was good at hiding it to his credit. So Spyfall, <clears throat> another game that we should be playing relatively soon. Yeah. Yeah. We're, Look forward to we'll that one. We'll be bringing it to the table soon. Yep. I am. <laughs> anyway. I'm looking forward to it, even though I'm not very good at it, but it's okay. I'll still have fun. Take two, or should I say number two, is take, take five. five. Or uh, six nymph, I believe is it's called in German, which means uh, the six card takes it or something like that. Oh, okay. That um, makes sense. Anyway, so uh, the way take five works, uh, and thankfully they've gotten rid of this take a number because it's not as good as take five, and they were trying to include both of them. Oh, really? So they have another box that's just take five, which oh, okay. is fine because I'd almost be tempted to get it because it's a smaller box still. <laughs> but anyway, um, so take five uh, as a card game. You deal every player 10 cards, and the goal is to have the least amount of penalty points by the time somebody hits like 64. It's like is it sixty four? It's sort of odd number, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I again, forget. so um, then after you deal out, you're going to deal out five or four cards. I always want to say it's five, but it's four cards in a vertical line. Yes, four um, cards in a vertical line. So then the way it works is everybody takes a card from their hand and they put it face down, and then you flip it over. And, and the, the smallest card goes first. Yes, the smallest card. Now you have to play it over the like the like the high. You have to place it to the next card of a um, like the closest like the, the, clo the closest like, number so, to the number. Yeah. So if you have you a have fifty-five to. and there's a forty-five and a fifty, you have to place it next to yes. the fifty because it's closer to the fifty than the forty-five. If your card is lower than all the cards that are on the table, like the not than the mm -hmm. row, then you have then to take, take one row. One. Wow. But that's strategic because sometimes you have to do that. Now, if you place the, the six card, you have to take the five cards that were in that stack before it. So when you place the six card, the fifth you take you take the five cards and that six yes. card stays there. Yep. So that's why it's called take five, because you're you, taking five cards. But if you do have a row of three and you're lower, you can take that. You yeah. don't have to well, take Well, I'm just one saying when five, you place the fifth card, when you the sixth card, the fifth card, the sixth yes, card, the sixth six card. card, then you have to take all. You of take them. the five cards. So that's where you have to have strategy. Yeah, because you're trying to mitigate how many points you're going to get. Now the penalty points, it's like if it's divided by five, that's worth like so many points. If it's doubles, it's worth more points. So like fifty-five is the highest penalty card in the game. Is it fifty-five? Yes. So anyway, so it's, it gets fun because uh, if you guys really saw our video when we did it, we. Uh, Filmed this twice so far, we have, haven't yeah. we? So, and the second time, like, we were just kind of being as funny as we could. Oh, I was I was failing. And we horribly, were like, Chris uh, Chris and I failing. were just putting, like, high amount of penalty cards in one stack. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> like, we were flying close them. to the sun. I yeah. was so ticked. <laughs> it was then. burning Olivia. So that was, that was a fun experience for us. Because once somebody hits, like, 64, it's like 64 points or something like that. It's around there. Once somebody hits that, the game comes to an end, and the person with the lowest penalty points wins. I'm just a little bit competitive. This game might be coming back to as well because it's such a fun game. So, so yeah, that's why I would say take five is number two. Yeah. Drum roll, please. Number one. We said there'd be a new A. Rosenberg game on the list. Today. Bonanza. It's a bean game. You're hard on my boxes. <laughs> This is one of these games where I have seen this in the game store forever. I would go in there and I would see it and I would be like, Man, this game looks silly. It looks silly. Like the artwork doesn't look that appealing. And then Does you, it look like a bean box? It does look like a bean box. It does look like a bean box. But I didn't know it was a bean box. And it's got this weird yellow color that to me was always a little off putting. But again, this game has grown on me. Like even the artwork grows on you because it's like you play the game and Every time I'm playing this game, especially with experienced board gamers, people who have played their fair share mm -hmm. of games, there's always this moment where it clicks and it's like, this is more than just a regular card mm -hmm. game. There's something about yeah. this game that has a lot of complexity. And like, I, I, yeah. I could see like, this would be one of those games where it's like, if I was in a hardcore board game, this would be like, an, like I could see myself getting together with friends like a couple times a month and playing this game. And never getting it's, tired it's of it. It's also another grudge holding game. <laughs> Bro. Yeah. <laughs> so we, um, yeah, it's, I, I, it's okay, I, still, with, I still love you, Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> we've played it with four players. I'm kind of curious to see how the higher player counts go because there's like a lot more. How many bidding. more can you do? Like, 
What's the max on it? I don't know. Was there six? Two to seven players. Oh. Which I don't think it would play well at two players. I know there's a two player mode. I just don't think it works at two players. Ooh. So are we gonna play that? Are we gonna play uh, this? Game this is gonna be on our, our well, yeah, well, this is gonna be a six player game. We're gonna we're gonna play this this one will also be returning to the table relatively soon because it's such a fun game. So and I get a rule wrong and I, I hate when I get rules wrong like that bothers me so oh yeah we have put out this game before you guys might have seen it so mm -hmm. uh, but yeah so the way we're talking about when i explain how it works okay the way bonanza works is you draw a hand and you can't rearrange your hand that's actually an important mechanic yes. and on your turn you will plant the first card from your hand and then you Dang. may plant the second Dang. card from your hand which then if you have two you of the same cards it's very <laughs> yeah uh, you, you have a you have a um a deck of like you have a, a two fields like uh, two plants you can well, buy a there third is one three but you have to pay for the third one yeah that's what i'm saying yeah you can buy a third one but you have two fields that you can plant in mm -hmm. and so you're trying to manage this field and then you can say like oh so the way you get you get rid of cards you don't want in your hand is you trade them who was a green bean <laughs> right um so yeah so uh when it's your turn you're going to flip over after you plant your two after you plant your cards you're going to flip over two cards from the deck and then you're going to, you can either trade them or you can plant them yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you can harvest at any time, but I think you have to have both fields occupied before you can harvest one, if I'm not mistaken. Really? Because uh, I think uh, I've harvested. Well, I think this rule I got wrong. Oh, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll really double check you, the rules. I think you are right. It's but, been a minute since yeah, we played, yeah. so. But anyways, but you can't harvest at any time. So sometimes you're like taking a thing, harvesting, and then taking another bean. So then, then like, so when you're not the active, the active player can only like trade, but like people might be trying to, let's just say that you have an annoying green bean coming up and you really don't have room for it. Yeah. Then you see Olivia's collecting green beans. So I can even just give her to her if yeah. she wants like, or she she could know that, hey, he doesn't want to get rid of that green bean, so I'm not going to take it. Like players, the only rule is players have to consent to the trade. Yep. So there's just this fun kind of trade. And again, there's grudge matches that form, which is hilarious. Yes. Uh, anytime you hold a grudge in this game, you're gonna lose. Like that's just yeah. a rule of thumb. <laughs> and you, you'll probably make the other player lose too. Yeah. And one player will win. So, this for me, I haven't thought about like my top ten favorite board games, but I wouldn't be like in a long time. But I wouldn't be surprised to find this game in it. This is just how good this game is. Like it's, I think we're doing a poor job at describing it. And it's one of those things where you really don't understand unless you play it. You really need to play. And it's not that understand. expensive. And it's been around forever. Yeah. But this game is... It'll click. Yeah, it'll click. It's, it's really, really fun. And it's a small package, which is why it's on our top 10. <laughs> small. <laughs> Number one. Tiny. Great games twist. and tiny packages. So this, this also comes with extra beans to play with. So there's a good variety to the rules for uh, how you play. And we're looking forward to uh, one of the videos that we want to put out for next year is playing and comparing the different versions of Bonanza that are currently on Amazon. Yeah. So, so and then that'll be a video seeing how they hold up to year. this original version. So that's what we're, but uh, anyways, I can't stress that how much you should play this game. <laughs> <laughs> Bad art and all. I mean, there are like other versions that if I the know. art is really keeping you yeah. from it, there's like a flower version. Oh, is there? Yeah, I'm, I, I'll am i have I to admit. Know. I like the beans. There's something about the beans that you absolutely fall in love with. The character design, it's, there's a lot of personality to the beans. There really is. One of them's like, I love this how the soybean like jumping and with a hoe, like yeah. it's going to hit the ground. I love how the soybean looks like a soy boy. It's hilarious. <laughs> the green bean is drunk. Really, Rosenberg might be a little based, you know. <laughs> you know, because you're green, you drink, you know, and then the, so the red bean's embarrassed. It's, it's awesome, guys. It really is neat. Yeah. Uh, but if you're looking for a good party game for this Christmas and Thanksgiving, pick this game up. You'll. Everybody will love it. I'll have to check, but I think it was on my uh, Christmas guide from last year. Was it? I mean, it's just a great game. So okay. I, I, um, I'll have to rewatch that because, like, I, um, I'm planning on doing another one, and I don't want to just retread ground if I've already mentioned it. So we should do a top tens games for parties for like. Yeah, we'll do that holiday. in the future. Oh, okay. Yeah, like for your Christmas holiday. guide. Top ten holiday. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we'll just, you know, let's, we'll just do what we think about and we'll see uh, if there's a, uh, but yeah, uh, like, let us know what are your top 10 uh, favorite great big games and small packages. I think um, you need to say that again. <laughs>
No, I like it when it's worded awkwardly. Um, and <laughs> yeah, well, so let, let us know what your top ten would be. Uh, I'd, be I'd be interested because um, I'm actually not too familiar with the smaller games, so I'm actually looking for some more small games to play. Yeah, I mean, we're interested in playing games around here. You know, we are the board games knights of the round table, so <laughs> it's actually a rectangle. Every but... every night a new quest if we're able. You'll get that guy. Board you'll, game nights! Sorry. You'll get that in a couple of weeks or two here. <laughs> okay, Anyways. guys, well, thank you for watching, and uh, I think that's all she wrote. <laughs> guys have a great one we'll see you next time and until next time take the initiative and roll, roll out, out.